All right, so I'm officially on on Snapchat. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. So we're also recording this right now. Um, so, oh. uh, so this is my Snapchat thing. Now, what does this thing do, though? Just what is it called again? Snapchat. Oh, your Snap code. My Snap code. So that's like a barcode. Yeah. Okay. Anyone can just scan it with their phones and be like, "Oh yeah, That's cool. All right. Also, I'm on Instagram now. Um, Isabella helped me set up the official Hipster Code Instagram site, and Bayside's making a ton of noise behind me. Um, Instagram, apparently you cannot share links though, man, so I'm a little bummed by that. So I'm trying to figure out, like, why is Instagram worth so much money if you can't, like, promote your products and stuff on it? I don't understand I mean, that. you can. How do you do that? If you can't link yeah. to the product, how do you, how do you, like, promote it? You're just like supposed to be, hey, here's a picture of uh, Matt. Find me on the internet with, <laughs> with trillions no, of websites. Like, you put it in your bio. Put the link in your bio. And then you're like, bio, hey, the, link, but, the link's in my bio. Go check out my bio. Please. But I have like thousands of links or at least hundreds of links for hipster code. So like, what if I had more than one? I don't know. Okay. All right. So then I'm also bummed. Like Snapchat, apparently, like you can't go as a website. I'm on, can I get back in? I feel like an old man with Snapchat. I really do. This is crazy. Um, go back to my story. All right, so here is Snapchat. Does it, make, does it play? Yeah. All right, so um, maybe they can tell me how I'm supposed to use Snapchat to to actually like promote my stuff. I think you can. <laughs> That's such an awful picture. I'm not sure what we're doing there. Bayside's making a ton of noise. How do I pull up my filters again? Tap on your face, or just tap on the screen. Dude, that is ridiculously awesome. Wait, wait, I like the filter. Wait, come back. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, so there's our picture. I'm a little bummed. That with Snapchat, we, we um, I also don't know how we're supposed to use this to promote it, but what is my Snapchat handle? Uh, the hipster code. I am at the hipster code on Snapchat, so if you guys are on Snapchat, please find me there. Um, I'll be posting stuff probably like throughout the day. I might even just take random pictures of like downtown Richmond or doing whatever I'm doing during the day. Um, also, I guess same with Instagram, or you're gonna help me run that, but um. I'm not sure what I'm doing with Instagram, but both of the links, guys, are in the description tab below. So if you guys would uh, uh, check that out as well, I appreciate it. So one of the things that I don't understand with a website like Snapchat is I think that it's great that like Snapchat is trying to address this whole augmented reality market where you know it does like really cool stuff with your phone, like you know it can it does facial recognition, all kinds of really nice stuff, and like. The other day, um, I was watching a video on Facebook's uh, Facebook. Uh, they have a new app that they're actually working on. A lot of people say it's like a complete ripoff of like Snapchat and that they're trying to go after the Snapchat uh, market. But like here's a TechCrunch article where they're talking about uh, this augmented reality camera effects uh, developer platform. So if uh, I saw Zuckerberg actually doing uh, a demonstration, but basically it's just like Snapchat in the sense that you can take pictures and then like, um, there was some really cool stuff that he was doing, like he was taking a room and filling it up with like Skittles and water and things, and it was very aware of, um, you know, the, there's a very some very sophisticated AI with, uh, you know, the the photo recognition and stuff like that. So I think that's uh, that that's pretty cool. Um, although it is kind of like like I said, a knock against Snapchat. Now the thing that is very interesting with Snapchat is like from a business perspective, I find it to be less useful than something like Twitter. Um, at least with Twitter, like you have the ability to 
you know, go out there and like, you know, promote your stuff. Hey, check out this video and like, hey, here's a link to my website or here's this product or like, you know, you can tweet to like one of the best ways if you run into like a company that, that is, you know, their service is down or something like that. If you end up tweeting out to the company, I've actually gotten pretty quick response back um, when, I, when I've done that sort of thing. And like Twitter provides that value. So there's real business value. There's real user value. However, it's never made a dime of profit. So after all these years, all this popularity, it's never made any money. Uh, meanwhile, Snapchat is just recently a publicly traded company on the uh, on the stock exchange, and I wonder how it's doing lately. Let's look at like uh, so it's really only been out for what year or so. So it went public went public on uh, March third. So was that this year? But anyway, you can see it it opened at, with a high of twenty seven dollars and nine cents a share. So at twenty six billion market cap at that value there that. Um, you know, that would have been almost double, uh, no, not quite double, but anyway, uh, quite a bit more than, than what his market cap is right now. But you can see Snapchat is valued at $26 billion right now. So Snapchat, it, its entire thing is like you, you only use it on your cell phones and then there's no way to like post links and things like that. It's all very personal. It's not really about businesses and, and promotion and things like that. And it's probably arguably one of the reasons why it's as it's, it's, it's popular as it is because it's cool. It's not some... It's not some business thing. It doesn't delude the product with uh, financial needs that every business has. But the problem, though, is that if you have a Snapchat product and you compare it to something like Twitter that does provide a business need and it is useful to users and is you know pretty popular even now, and it doesn't make any money, so how is Snapchat going to make any money? I don't understand that. So that's the craziness of this world that we live in right now with technology where like you have a company here that Snap, Snap lost $514 million in 2016, and it warns that it may never be profitable. So they, how do you lose you know, $500 million in one year, tell everybody you're not going to be profitable, and then still have your stock trade at you know, $24 billion? Like, people have lost their mind. Like, they really have. And that's actually one of the reasons why people have, you know, a lot of like, uh, analysts and things like that have th felt that we've been in like a uh, tech bubble for quite some time. Millennials these days will buy anything. They really will. And it's part of the reason why, like, and, and just the crazy world that we kind of live in is, is the reason why, like, when I was trying to find a domain name for my website, I wasn't exactly happy with hipster code. Somewhat derogatory to the hipsters out there, I'm sure. Uh, some people would consider me a hipster. Um, I don't know about that. But it's just like, and I use the term loosely, man. Like, if you're like a yuppie. Uh, wearing, you know, spandex bike shorts, you know, going in, in some public park and doing pu push-ups like I call you a hipster. I mean, you're probably more of just a freak, but um, no, I'm just kidding. But the the hipsters, man, like uh, they're everywhere, especially in the tech market. And that's kind of why I built this entire hipster code website and called it what it was. It's a programming website. It has programming news by programmers. I have programmers that write for me. I write for it. Occasionally, I want to do it more. Um, but I do the tutorials on it, right? It's all about coding, it's programming, and that's why I call it hipster code. But people have lost their mind, like they really have. Um, so if, if hips, like hipster code is at least profitable for me, it doesn't make a whole lot of money. Like when I'm writing news articles, most of the money that, that gets earned on this website, if not, well, yeah, like probably 80% of all the money is you know, based on people clicking ads and things like that, which they rarely do these days. So um, that, that's, a, that's a tough industry to be in, but at least... Uh, in a sense that like what this website website costs me besides the the writers that that is a loss that I'm taking in some sense um, Yeah, like overall, okay, this website is losing money because I do have writers But if I didn't then it would be profitable at least because I built the whole thing myself I don't have to have network administrators and database administrators and everything working for me I don't have a marketing department or anything like that. So you can bootstrap. I think your own success story not saying that you know this one is a, uh, like a real success story or anything, but for me, I'm you know I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the fact that you know I get several thousand people a week at this point that go to this site. I get uh, 450 thousand people that have found me on the internet and everything. So um, you know, to, to, in that sense, that I, I do think it's a success story, and, I, and I'm going to continue to push it. So make sure you guys are going to Hipster Code, checking out my site. But um, I, once again, I don't know. Going back to the topic of like Snapchat and from a business sense, like I don't understand some of these projects. Um, and I think that it's kind of a dangerous like precedent that we're setting because eventually, you know, the rug's going to get pulled out from us. Like there's going to be a, a market correction. Um, you know, there's already been downturns in Silicon Valley and things like that. But if we keep having companies that will never earn a profit, 
and be valued at $25 million. I just don't understand how that works, man. Like that, it just defies all principles of, of, of business, you know, going back to the earliest days of, of humanity. So, all right, guys, um, this video is sponsored by two sponsors this month and they help pay the bills once again. Uh, in fact, they really, they are the main reasons why I can even afford to pay writers anyway. Um, uh, but Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is, um, my sponsor that I've had for quite some time now, they, they have 12 and 16 week courses. They're in person. It's a developer boot camp. They're owned by a multi-million dollar company. Um, they have an intention to try to get people in the door uh, with technologies that are used like right here and now, a lot of web technology like React, Angular, Node.js. Um, they're gonna teach how to use Git as a version control system. You're gonna be working with other developers and uh, definitely check those guys out. I appreciate it. Uh, the web's, web, uh, not website, but the video is also sponsored by Edwonix uh, Learning Solutions. And if you go to edwonix.tv, that is their website um, where you can get all kinds of information on all kinds of different coding projects. Here you have like Django, uh, Ruby on Rails. Uh, they, they do a lot of things with view cloud architecture and things like that. So all kinds of information you guys can, uh, can check out at edwonix.tv, um, which is Edwonix Learning Services. Um, they also have a YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check that out, that is Edwonix Learning Solutions YouTube channel. All right, guys, links for my sponsors are in the description box area below. Also, the link to my website, which is Hipster Code. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and bye.